Lord. Praise the Lord.
all day, healing the sick and teaching to crowds. He stood and had plenty of things to do. He had performed miracles. And so the evening drew near, and Jesus took a pause from his teaching and from his disciples, and he said unto them, Let us go to the other side. So Jesus left the crowd behind and entered the boat with his disciples. Let us keep in mind that Jesus plainly told his disciples that they were going to the other side. So when God says something to you, give your directive that settles it. You shouldn't have to worry about what may happen. If God has given it to you, you can take it to the bank and it's going to happen. So with this statement and his destination, Jesus entered into the rear of the ship and went to sleep on a pillow. You see, Jesus is God and he's also man. Therefore, he was tired. This human body gets tired at times. Sometimes we think that we are the everybody's battery. We can just go, go, and go on. But there are times that this body gets tired. And you have to take a rest. So Jesus, we see here in this scenario, he went to sleep on the pillow. And while Jesus was taking a nap, a storm arose. The storm began to rage and generate winds big enough to put the boat in danger of sinking. As the waves broke over the boat, the boat began to take water on, and it seemed like it may go down. The whole while Jesus was sleeping through the storm. Again, as far as Jesus was concerned, they were going on the other side. So when God, like I said, gives something in your spirit, tell you to do something, or give you a directive, you don't have to worry. Yeah. Amen. Because God is in control, and he's too wise to make a mistake. Yeah. So while Jesus was sleeping, the disciples, you know, they were trained fishermen, began to fear those who had been tested experience in the water. So they knew that the situation was serious. They knew that the water was going to take the boat down if something did not happen. So some of them even thought that they were going to die all the while. Once again, Jesus taking a nap. Not worrying at all. So when you got your hands in God's hand, everything is going to be alright. So Jesus, the disciples were with him, and they turned the water, they was with Jesus when he turned the water to wine. When he healed the sick, opened the blind man's eyes, raised the dead. They were with him. They saw many miracles that Jesus had performed, but yet, here's a situation. They panicked. They began to fear. They were afraid. They were with Jesus. They were the one who had the power. Amen. But they still were afraid. And the master, as we said earlier, he was right there with them. So when God is there with you, you don't have to worry. But they were still afraid. So the disciples could not take it anymore. And there are times in your life when you be, you are faced with so many problems, trials and tribulations that it takes toll on you So in this situation. They couldn't take it anymore. Fear overtook them. Fear is a dangerous thing. If you allow fear to get in your mind, it'll cause you to do some very terrible things. And so here were the disciples. They were so fearful. They woke up Jesus, who was sleeping, and asked the Master, don't you care that we perish? In other words, they were asking Jesus, do you care we drown? Do you care? And Jesus did not immediately address the disciples because he was focused on the assignment. Yeah. Remember, Jesus was focused on the assignment. He didn't even address them because he was focused on the assignment. He got up and addressed the storm. Many times we address everything but the problem. We go by the circumstances around the problem. We walk around it, but Jesus went straight to the problem. And he addressed the problem. Yeah. Jesus
Jesus spoke to the wind and said to the waves of the sea, three simple words, peace, be still. Peace, be still. The wind ceased and the water was completely calm. And Jesus said to his disciples, why, why, why are you afraid? Do you still, why don't you have faith? And the disciples were afraid and asked one another, what manner of man is this? What manner of man is this? Even the wind and the water obey him. God can do anything but fail. So Jesus was not worried about the storm raging because he remained focused on the assignment and not the opposition. And that's what we're going to have to do in our lives. When the storms of life become raging, we focus too much sometimes on the opposition. Oh, having a pity party. It's me, Lord. Why me, Lord? But Jesus focused on the assignment and not the opposition. I say to you this morning, speak to your storm. So, having established the Foundation for this morning message, we need to look at what does it mean for you and I today? A few things. First of all, Jesus is not moved by human situations. Jesus is not moved by human situations. Jesus only did what he was led of his father, going to the other side. He had an assignment to heal the sick and, and perform miracles. He was not concerned about the oppositions. Jesus had been ministering all day. He knew that he had more ministry to perform into the night and on the other side. So he got into the boat. He told his disciples, we're going to the other side. And again, he just took a nap. And when the storm rose, Jesus was not moved. Jesus actually slept through the storm because he had already been revealed to him what he needed to do on the other side. Some of us are just like the disciples. When the storms are raging in our lives, we allow fear to get the best of us. We cry, oh Lord, oh Lord, what am I Amen. We just panic. We give up hope sometimes. As a result, and during these times, we give up. We feel hopeless. We don't know what to do. And sometimes the pressures of life become so hard, we may get consider turning back on God. But I encourage you, continue to look to the hill and come to your help. For your help coming from the Lord. And so, and so, but I want to encourage somebody today, amen, just to hold on. Be encouraged and keep believing in God. Hallelujah. And just wait. Wait. Wait on God. Wait till your change come. Amen. You know what the good thing about it, you don't have to wait, my brothers and my sisters, until the battle is over. You don't have to wait until the fight is over. You can stop now. Amen.
But we must not be moved by our positions. We must only be moved by what God says and what God is doing to lead us. We know that the enemy comes and he is coming to kill, to steal, and destroy. He don't want you to have joy. He don't want you to have peace. He don't want to see homes, strong family. Amen. He want to see the divide in the church. He's coming to do these things because that's his job. But God said, I come that you may have life. Amen. And have it more abundantly. So if you are experiencing a difficult period or a storm in your life, don't give up. Be encouraged. Because help is on the way. There is help is on the way. So you're facing a storm. Hallelujah. It doesn't mean that you may be outside of the will of God. Every time you know you go through, somebody always want to be on the sideline. Oh, she must have done this. He must have done that. But our trials only come to make us strong. Hallelujah. They come that we may be strengthened. Hallelujah. No God in the power of his might. Hallelujah. So just hold on this morning. I'm telling you to hold on. Because you've been ready on land. You've been going through. Hallelujah. Just speak. Amen to your storm. Amen. I need to share this to you. Share this with you that it, you must simply have more confidence in God than you have in the fear of your storm. Did you hear what I said? I said, you must have more confidence in God than you have in the fear of your storm. When, when peace of God fills your heart, you can sleep through a storm. You can have rest in your spirit. God will assure you that he's with you. For the scripture lets us know that if we keep our minds on God, he will keep us. Keep your mind and heart. Stay on him. He'll keep us in perfect peace. God is a present help this morning. He's a present help in the time of trouble. So therefore, while we're in the midst of a storm, keep in mind, keep your mind stayed on Jesus. Walk by faith and not by sight. You may not see the victory, but all through the blood of Jesus, I heard the song say, there's victory ahead. Victory ahead through the blood of Jesus. There are victory Ahead. Yeah. Amen. Just, just encourage the person next to you. Tell them, speak to your storm. Speak to your storm. Hallelujah. That's all we got to do is speak. Hallelujah to our storm. You see, fear is a choice. Fear is a choice. Like faith is a choice. You can choose to be fearful or you choose to have faith. The choice is yours. Which one will you choose when the storm of life come your way? What will you choose? Faith. Believe it in God. Or you allow the enemy to steal. Amen. Your joy. The choice of yours. For the disciples chose to operate in fear. Jesus chose to operate in faith. The disciples chose to operate in fear. But Jesus chose to operate in faith. This meant that Jesus was resting while the disciples were stressing. Which will you choose again today, fear or faith? You cannot operate in faith, in fear and faith at the same time. You can't operate. That causes a conflict. Hallelujah. You say on one hand, you're going to give it to the Lord. And then when it gets tight, you come down again and pick it up. It doesn't work that way. Yes. Which will you operate in? Fear or faith? Jesus always deals with the cause of a problem. The text says that he rebuked the wind first and then he spoke to the waves. The waves were only reacting to the wind. Yes. And whenever storms rage in your life, will it be in your marriage, your workplace, your children, or whatever? Seek to find the root of the problem first and then deal with that. Once you deal with that, everything else will fall in place. As I mentioned earlier, we talked about speaking the language of faith. We all have read, read and heard that faith is 
is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen according to Hebrews 11 and 1. First, Jesus spoke that he was going to the other side. Later, he spoke to the wind and the wave. In both cases, he spoke the language of faith. The language of faith speaks what we believe, not what we see. The language of faith speaks what we believe and not what we see. Speaking is what we see will never change or what we see will change through faith. Looking at it from an earthly condition, speaking a heavenly language. And from believing from the heart releases the power of God and the earth change so that we can believe him. So we got to release, hallelujah, and let God have his way. We're going to have to release it and let God have his way. How can we release it? Speak to your storm. Amen. Speak to your storm. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. If you know that the Lord is real, shout hallelujah. For the songwriter says, don't wait until the battle is over. Shout now. Why? Because you know that in the end, you're going to win. Is there anybody in the house this morning who can have faith to speak to your storm? Because I know that trouble, I tried the Lord, and I know that trouble don't last always. Hey Amen. Speak this morning, I tell you, speak to your storm. Just like Jesus was on the boat with the disciples, Jesus, amen, when the storm began to roar and rage, that same Jesus, hallelujah, is in the house this morning. And he can speak to your circumstances. Whatever it may be, that the God I serve is in the house this morning. He can speak, hallelujah, to your circumstances. If you're going through finances, you're having problems with your children, your spouse, your job, speak to your storm. If you're battling, hallelujah, with an illness, depression, anxiety, mental health, drug addiction, I said speak. I recommend to somebody this morning, Jesus, Jesus Christ, the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Jesus, the great I am, Jesus, the wheel in the middle of the wheel, Jesus, the one who turned the water to wine, Jesus, the one, hallelujah, who healed the woman of the issue of blood, is Jesus, hallelujah, I'm talking about, he walked on the water. Jesus, the one who gave his only begotten son, the one who died, hallelujah, on the whole rugged cross. He died for your sins and my sins. And on that third day he rose, hallelujah, with all power, all power in his hand. He's able to speak to your soul. How many of you know this morning that God is able to speak to your soul? I call him Jesus. Thank you. 
Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. 